Uh, they've come to the end of this time. Uh, he's going to remind them that they're going to enter the land and he's not going to. He's going to leave them now. But he brings to the remembrance some of the events that have taken place and the primary one is this, recorded in these words here in verses 7 and 8 of Deuteronomy 4. For what great nation is there that has God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? For whatever reason we may call upon him. And what great nation is there that has such statutes and righteous judgments as are in all this law which I set before you this day? And then just a few statements later, he asked another two more questions. Did any people, these are verses 33 and 34, did any people ever hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as you heard and live? Or did God ever try to go and take for himself a nation from the midst of another nation by trials, by signs, by wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and by great terrors? according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Amen. So these words are a reminder of who they are, why they're here, what they're doing, mm -hmm. uh, the destiny, if you will, if you want to use that word, mm -hmm. uh, the destiny. God had destined them for this, <laughs> spoken, having spoken to their fathers, having done these great wonders, and now having brought them to this place. And here they stand with their leaders speaking to them for one of the final times and bringing these things to their remembrance, asking them questions. Now we know that these questions are rhetorical. They know the answers to these questions. No other nation, no other God, no other people, no other works and events like these. No other. Theirs is the only God. Amen. They are the only people Amen. that God has chosen for himself and, and asserted his hand into the earth by trials, signs, wonders, war, outstretched arm, and great terrors. Most of those, of course, are words that describe things that are uh, what would we say, anathema to people? You, don't want, you want, don't want to be caught up in such things and swept away by such things because these are the kinds of events that sweep people away and all their possessions. Yet this is what the Lord God had done for them. This is what he had worked for them and brought them then to this place. Now that was, of course, in that generation, that time, the way God had chosen to work then, how he was revealing himself at that point. But of course, now we know that's only a portion because he's revealed more. He's shown us more yes. now. Amen. He's done greater works Amen. now. It's, it, it's good for us to think then, those of us who are in Christ Jesus, those of us who are joined to the Lord by His Spirit in His Son, the same kinds of questions. What people have been able to draw near to the Lord, to have Him near to us for the things that we speak to Him, the things that we ask of Him? What people has the Lord drawn to Himself? See, this is part of the, this language of us being drawn to God yeah. is, is a, uh, builds upon the things that were said and done in Israel by Moses and David and the other prophets. Because a greater light has been brought to us. When God came to Israel, the mountain melted, the earth quaked. But when God sent his son to us, we saw his glory. They saw no form. Moses reminds them of that in, in this section right in Deuteronomy 4. You didn't see anything when he came down and spoke to you. But we saw his glory. That's what John says. We saw his glory, the glory as of the only begotten from the Father, the only begotten Son from the Father, full of grace 
and truth. God brought His law. The Son brought grace. Mm -hmm. And truth. Mm -hmm. See, it, it was these things were joined together in Him. Not just the reality of the terror of God's presence, but the reality of the uh, acceptance and approval of God in Christ Jesus, who was made flesh like us and who now ever intercedes for us. See, this is the implications that have been made known to us about the Savior's work. We'll read you some other questions here with which we are very familiar, of course. Here in Romans chapter 8, you're familiar with these questions, certainly. And they're, and they're asked, of course, from a different perspective. What then shall we say to these things, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son. See, this is, this is what we've encountered and what we've experienced. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Mm -hmm. It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? Mm -hmm. So those are questions from the perspective, from the larger perspective, from the broader perspective, from the wider perspective and the deeper perspective, the higher perspective that we have in Christ Jesus. Not just earthly events mm -hmm. of the establishment of a nation and lands and houses, but of God making us His own, coming to dwell among us, abide in us, and make us prepared that we can then go to Him without any obstructions, without anything inhibiting us, without any barriers between us and Him. That He would be in us and we would dwell in Him. So, brethren, that's what we've been called to. That's what we've been called to. Let me read you one more text here. From Psalm 73 and verse 28. It is good for me to draw near to God. I've put my trust in the Lord, that I may declare all your works. So this is why we've gathered then this morning uh, to remember who we are, what God has done uh, to make us his own, and to establish us, to root us and ground us that we may then have this concourse one between another, this exchange of the good things that God has granted us. But of course that's not the end. This meeting is not the end at all. It is preparatory for more. Not just for more meetings here, although he may allow that. <laughs> it's preparatory for him and his presence. So this is why we gather. And the thing for which we prepare ourselves. Let's pray then. Brother Mike will come and have our lesson for us. Our Father, we bless you and honor you that you've granted us these things. That we can give uh, the resources of our heart and mind once again, to consider these things, to lay them before us, to muse upon this reality, the great works that you have done and are doing, and continue to do in us as we yield ourselves to your will and purpose. We thank you for the refuge that we find in your Son and in the gathering of our people, your people, who love your truth who will settle for nothing less. We want your truth at work in us. We want this reality. We want to see clearly and hear keenly the things that you have said and done. And we want to speak about those things and joy in them again. Thank you again for your mercy and kindness in all of this. We pray for Brother Mike. We thank you for his devotion and his willingness uh, to lead us and to speak of these things with us so that we can rejoice in them, in you, yourself, in your Son, Christ Jesus. We give thanks and pray. Amen.
Brother.